Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a cubic equation. We have x cubed plus 5x plus 18, and we're going to be solving for x values. I'll be presenting at least two methods, and let's start with the first one. For my first method, I'd like to use the cubic formula. Do you know how that works? Here's what we're going to do. We're going to first isolate the constant term and then use an identity, which is a plus b cubed minus 3ab multiplied by a plus b equals a cubed plus b cubed. This identity can also, this identity can also be used for factoring expressions like sum of two cubes, but that's not our topic. We're going to focus on this, these two expressions. So I'm going to call this x so that we do get a cubic equation from here that looks like this, x cubed minus 3abx equals a cubed plus b cubed. So this is actually a cubic equation whose solution, at least one of the solutions, is a plus b. You know that x equals a plus b satisfies this equation, right? So x equals a plus b is a solution. Great. So if you can make our equation like that, then we can conclude that, okay, we can find a and b and hopefully come up with the solution. So here's the whole idea. Notice that the coefficient of x is negative 3ab, which is 5 in the original problem. And the constant term, which happens to be this, is negative 18. So a cubed plus b cubed is negative 18. At this point, you're more than welcome to guess and check your solution if you can find out what a and b are. But I don't think it's going to be that straightforward because think about it. You are looking at two numbers whose product is negative 5 thirds and the sum of their cubes is negative 18. So how do you solve this as a system? Any ideas? So you can definitely go ahead and do a lot of substitutions like you can isolate B or A from here, plug it into the second one. But I have a better idea. I want to cube both sides here. Okay. That gives me a cubed plus b cubed is equal to negative 125 over 27. And then I want to go ahead and from here, isolate b cubed and write it as negative 18 minus a cubed. And then I want to take this and use it here. Look at that. Isn't that cool? That gives us the following. a cubed multiplied by negative 18 minus a cubed equals negative 125 over 27. And then if you distribute negative 18 a cubed minus a to the sixth power equals negative 125 over 27. And then add the terms on the left hand side on both sides, I mean the opposites, so that you can put everything on the right hand side, which will become the left hand side now. So it's going to look like this a to the sixth power plus 18 a to the third minus 125 over 27 equals zero. Should be zero equals that, but I just switched sides. Hopefully that's fine. Now we did get a hexic equation, but that's kind of like a bi or tri quadratic. What do I mean by that? You can replace a cubed with something like c, and from here you get c squared plus 18c minus 125 over 27 equals zero. So this is quadratic, obviously, but then we'll use the back substitution formula. How do you solve it? Negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 324, minus, which turns into plus sign, for a c, that's going to be 500 divided by 27. Uh-oh, we're going to have to deal with very large numbers. Guess what? I'm not going to deal with them. I'm just going to leave it as is. But one thing that might be a little bit of helpful is maybe try to factor something out of these, like if you, if, you, if you can find a common factor, obviously 324 is 18 squared, so that could be written as, let's see, 2 times 3 squared squared, which is 2 to the second times 3 to the fourth, in other words, 81 times 4. And 500 can be written as 5 times 10 squared, which is 2 times 5 squared, which is 5 2 squared times 5 to the third. So from here, you immediately get that 4 is the only common factor. It's not going to help a lot, but just a little bit maybe. Uh, you can go ahead and take it out. So when you take it out, it's going to be like a 2 here, 
this will be divided by four and this will be divided. So it's gonna be some improvement. Uh, it's gonna be a little better. And when you divide everything by two, you'll get rid of the you know fraction, like you're gonna get something like this. And then here, uh, it's gonna be like uh, the square root of 81 times 27 plus 125 divided by 27. Unfortunately, that doesn't have any common factors that you can take out, but at least we tried and we kind of got stuck, right? Maybe there's an easy way to simplify this and I'm missing it most of the time, that's the case, but I'm not seeing any easy way out. But at least I showed you a formula and that wasn't the goal because our goal, the ultimate goal is the second method because that's the cool method. Why did I not introduce that earlier? Because save the best for last, okay? Cool, cool. Now, cubic formula is not very pleasant, but you can still try. The problem with that is sometimes you even get complex solutions and I think there's a case called irreducible case or casus irreducible, something like that. I don't know. But anyways, so we got to look at this problem from a different perspective. First of all, think about it this way. This problem might appear on a math contest. It's that type of problem. It doesn't have to be an Olympiad, maybe a basic level, regional level, city level, whatever. But it's kind of a little bit non-standard or I should say a non-routine problem. So what do you do? You look for a smart way out. And that can be done by focusing on two things. First, I, I'll probably do like a 2A and 2B. So the A branch will talk about, okay, maybe since I don't have any X squared, I could probably factor this into a linear term and a quadratic term, right? And also I kind of want to uh, stipulate on uh, the constant term like AC needs to be 18. So maybe, a can be a 6 and B, C can be a 3 or a 9 and a 2, so on and so forth. Notice that this is a positive 5x, so that probably tells me that there should be some minus sign so that we can get rid of the x squared. So the key here would be getting rid of the x squared. So how can you do that? Well, this gives you bx squared. And uh, what else can you get? ax squared. So that kind of tells you, oh, okay, we should not have any x squared, so a plus b should be zero. In other words, you can replace b with negative a, so that kind of gives you something a little bit nicer. And with the c, because a, a c is 18, you can replace c with 18 over a, and there you go, you only have a single variable. Isn't that nice? And then from here, you should be able to solve it, but it's not guaranteed. Uh, and what can I do? I can probably look at the coefficient of x. For example, this would be one of them, 18 over ax. The other x is going to come from here, minus a squared x. So that is equal to how many x's? 5x's. Great. So now we're supposed to have 18 over a minus a squared is 5. And if there's a nice solution, like an integer solution, I should be able to find it. a equals 1 does not work. a equals 2 is 9 minus 4. That works. Awesome. It's a miracle, right? Anyways, you get the idea from here. You can find A. Not too hard, right? By guess and check. But I have the 2B or not 2B. That's why I split it up. Now, we have a really cool way of factoring it. Like I said earlier, this is a contrived problem, especially designed for these kinds of things. I'm going to go ahead and break down the 18 into 8 plus 10. That makes sense, right? I mean, 8 plus 10 is equal to 18, but why 8 plus 10? Because of the way this factors. You see that? So now we can go ahead and factor these two and factor those two. This is a sum of two cubes that can be broken down like this. And this is like common factor, easy piece of cake. Now x plus 2 is a common factor. Take it out, you get x squared minus 2x plus x, which is minus x. Hmm. No, never mind. I got 5x because I forgot to distribute. And that should give you, wait, wait, wait. I should add 5 to this. No, no, never mind. X plus 2 is a common factor. What am I talking about? 2x plus 9. There you go. Okay, that should be the right way to do it. But we can always check with Wolfram Alpha. Ta-da. Here's the solution. Yes, there's an integer solution. And this is the alternate form which confirms our findings. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time in another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.